Thank you so much to everyone. So I, I think we just really wanted to a bit summarize uh, our uh, action points uh, that we came to throughout the the two days. Uh, I, I just thought I'd put back the, the work plan we set up uh, during the annual meeting for, for this uh, year. And I, I think the, the discussions we had in the last couple of days, it's really just feeding into what we have set up before, but I think really adding uh, much more meat <laughs> onto the uh, objectives as they were set. Uh, so maybe just I think like in the and then I think please just jump in when I say something that you maybe disagree or uh, I think we can just go point by point to to see if we actually agree on the way forward. Uh, I, I think today was really focused on the access to care, uh, early access uh, in the community, and I, I think we were really like uh, uh, addressing the the two points that were there: the review of the existing models of care and developing the, the guidance. So I think here with the ORP uh, guidance, we are almost to the end. But then I think we have also uh, got really rich discussions around the uh, barriers uh, to, to uh, moving faster to improving access to decentralized care. And I think there's been quite some concrete steps that we thought we could put in place to, to improve that. And uh, and uh, I think we'll get uh, maybe uh, when we go in details of the our uh, uh, work, uh, uh, the, the sessions we had this uh, at the end of the morning, we might get other elements. But I think that the key points that I took, uh, that we took with Kate from, from that discussion was really one is that, uh, that there is a ORPs. As we are, we discuss in the in the guidance, this is one way of decentralizing care. But there is other ways where we can uh, uh, improve this network of uh, access to to cholera care uh, in the between the community and the, the CTC. So there is many other ways where we could maybe uh, faster reach the the patient. The, at the community level, but I think that just not to forget what Diana mentioned uh, earlier is the stabilization centers, which is just add them. I mean, if you have a opportunity to have a qualified staff at the ORP po point where who can put the IV line there, and this can probably save many lives when, when the referral uh, pathways are complicated. Then. So we thought probably one of the things that would be interesting to do is what we have actually said we would do already a year ago, the, is to, to really uh, try to to be document to 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 list these different uh, uh, possibilities of uh, uh, improving access, so from the ORPs, but also like uh, how to uh, uh, better use the the existing uh, delivery strategies in the community, from the community health workers, maybe in the, the household distributions and so on. So that might be something that I think we can work further on in the in the coming months. And we might be proposing you maybe in the again in the coming months to have a call specifically on on this topic, so that we can further brainstorm with the group that is specifically interested in the in the access to care at the community level. The, another point that clearly came out is the importance of the communicating, building trust, the the links with the uh, community engagement uh, strategies. So I think that's also something that we really we should be. Um, uh, empowering. Uh, I'll have to ask you for the help of the localization agenda. You know, to to really uh, try to yeah, uh, do things where the needs are right, not not the, the high level, but at the at the community level. The, I don't know, Joao, if you want to. <laughs> I think the other, I think, uh, key point came out on the advocacy on the importance to really bring the decentralized care to, to all the levels so that in the, when we are asking, I mean, the, the donors and funders uh, are willing, I mean, we have to make it the way that this will come as an essential package of uh, case management care. So it's, it's not one or the other, it's the two that have to be done in the parallel. And Kate suggested that there is probably ways that this can be actually embedded in the, um, request forms so that it comes as a, as a default, so the decentralized care is there uh, by default and you have to opt out rather than opt in them. Um, uh, 
Yeah, and I, I think maybe up, if, if we are able to do this review on the on different models and the, of decentralized care, maybe the next step is a bit to enlarge the the decentralized care guidance beyond the the ORP ORPs along them. I don't know if you have other. No, it's good. Thank you. I don't know if you have any comments on that, and maybe things that we have not properly um, spell out in the. David, please. No. Okay, you... Three more action items, uh, one for the whole group and then two from uh, the Secretariat. So um, I guess Kate and the Secretariat team, um, uh, one item is to send out the outline for um, the uh, case management training uh, for the group to get feedback. Um, and then uh, the other Secretariat item is uh, uh, posting the updated technical note on antibiotics to the resources page for Global Task Force um, for cholera control. And then everybody in the case management uh, working group uh, to reply with feedback on uh, the case management training outline after Secretariat sends it out within two weeks. And if you're willing to send whatever training materials, uh, case management training materials you use over. I think that's very concrete. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I I wanted to say something about referral uh, means, um, because of course it, it's important to have the 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 sites. But then if we have debts in those those sites, then the community might reject uh, what we implement. Um, and just once again to to think of of many options so okay if we have uh, ambulances that's that's great uh but we can use motorcycles uh from the community itself uh we can use uh i don't know a, a little truck that uh, has i mean there are many means and usually the community actually has already because they have already transportation identified um so just not to forget that and of course to set up uh some some basis so that they, those drivers or those motorcycles, uh, they, they are protected. So rather vaccinate, targeted vaccination or SOPs for hygiene or things like that, but just really like never to forget those referral uh, means. Yeah, I, thank you. I, I think that goes uh, in the decentralized care uh, package. I think it's something we discussed in these groups in the morning that it's probably like, yeah, it should be there and it's kind of part, but I think we never really discuss it, but it's such a crucial part of uh, saving lives in this context. And uh, so I think that's maybe something that we can actually uh, specifically list as a as a topic that we have to include in the, the, the review and discussions then. Uh, yes, please, Sam. Maybe just a suggestion on the data side, coming back to sort of my area of work, like when you're looking at uh, sort of high risk groups and population at risk. So a suggestion to maybe consider also mentioning the, the need for data on capacities and the identification essentially of groups that are beyond reach of those services in the first place. I think we're assuming here patients that may suffer most from being infected, but looking at capacity to also identify those that are outside of the network altogether could be important the access the the yeah, yeah the the physical, physical access, access to the to the facilities yeah. Yeah. In them. yes so. yeah the, the something about reviewing the kids has that been mentioned or did i miss it uh, the what sorry <laughs> reviewing the cholera kids the cholera it, it is there it's not actually a gtfcc item so it's but yes it's absolutely there all right, sorry, they're, they're reviewing the call. So sorry, I, I just also, I have now started the discussion on the community side, but I have not read the rest of my uh, app. But the kids were not there, so I think that's very well pointed. And I think we'll keep, you, you're still willing to take uh, comments yeah, on the absolutely. kids. Absolutely, uh, I've got some names. And yeah. just, maybe just one thing that to, to clarify a little bit is the point about, and this is something that, that Will Seed raised uh, quite clearly and we agree on, is this point about the reaching Although we haven't found a common name, uh, as we say, we know that there are limitations to calling it RCCE, et cetera. It's really the community engagement piece that we that we are looking for. And although we're not going to develop that as such, but ensuring that we have the links into that localization agenda, I believe it's called, because it's that's how you're going to know, that's how you're going to succeed. 
in fact. So we can, in, as a case management, there are aspects that are our responsibility, but our responsibility is to link into those existing. Mean that we don't, we'll have to look at how we do that, but it is a critical piece, especially for ORPs and the decentralization, that it, this isn't in isolation. It has to be with that community leadership and that localization agenda. So, uh, and how do you adapt? As we said, and that's one of the reasons that the guidance will be, we know there will be adaptations because you, it cannot be a one size fits all because once you're at the community level, things have to be adapted. Uh, Kate, I was just going to mention that Daniel Young and I have an NIH grant to explore how um, job aids and uh, the rehydration calculator works at the level of village doctors, which are akin to some of uh, the levels of providers you're talking about. That result uh, will probably happen in about a year, and I'm happy to share that when it comes up because I think it'll be useful for the ORP discussion. Great. Welcome. Great. Thank you. So I'm just going to move on to the next uh, topic. So it's just yeah. okay that that was on the increasing access with some additions that we have not listed. So thank you very much. Then we discuss on the in the on the improving clinical care specifically. The the topic that we touched upon in these two days was the uh, treating uh, rehydration in children with cholera with acute so severe malnutrition. So I think here it was uh, the the review is ongoing. So I think we'll be waiting for Rupa to finalize the the report of that review, but I think there was an agreement uh, within the group that we will take the results and try to use it, uh, what we have today to revise the, the current guidance, and we'll encourage partners to engage in the clinical trials that could bring uh, further evidence to that, but I think the agreement in the group is that we need to change this now because we know that the current guidance isn't uh, uh, sufficient to, to rehydrate the children. The, we haven't discussed much on the elderly, but I think this one goes actually uh, in the data point because I think with the improved uh, understanding of clinical characteristics, we might get some insights into that. So maybe we'll uh, the suggestion would be maybe to the for the moment to deprioritize this slightly as we have moved further on on other topics in the agenda. And the partners, they continue work on the, the studies on the antibiotics. So maybe we'll wait for that to be finalized before we really re-engage in the discussion. Then. But then really on the data collection, I think there was uh, some really good discussions yesterday uh, on the on the clinical side. I think we have, uh, I think we really appreciate the, the CRFs that were um, uh, prepared by uh, prepared and that are available for the use, but we propose that within our group that we take this further. So we discuss further what we need from cholera standpoint, what would be interesting and feasible to collect in the cholera treatment centers. So we'll be organizing a call again in the next uh, uh, weeks, months to come. Uh, and uh, yeah, maybe for those that are more interested in really in clinical care, to, to look together at the the proposed forms and discuss, you know, like what is really interesting, what can we do or not. The, also in the link to that, uh, there is on the understanding cholera, I think there was clear uh, ambition and willingness from the countries and from the donors possibly as well to look at the uh, at the existing data we have. So the, the these basic descriptions of uh, who our patients are which we can and should be able to do it. It is something with the data we already have and sit on it. Then. And then lastly, I think on the uh, on the surveillance side, I think it was really great to have some agreements on some, I think, key <laughs> aspects on reporting of cases and that. And I think the, you know, the I think having a common agreement how to report community that. I think that will really help us understand who is dying where in the first place, but also improve the and harmonize the the key uh, indicators on cholera that we are collecting, and similarly on the on the cases. So I think again, uh, 
should we report cases from ORPs or not? Yes, we should. But then there is a lot of um, further work that needs to go on the surveillance side of them. So I think these were the key things with addition to all the points that were mentioned that we took notes of. Uh, I don't know if you want to... I think the only thing I would add, and it's really just a compliment to what was already said, is potentially um, when we're looking at the CRF, but also looking at the analysis that's being done from it, and looking also at analysis, as we were saying, of doing retrospective data, but it's even more helpful if all countries are doing the same retrospective. And if we're looking at older data, doing the same analysis, and then you can have a better, I think it'll be very basic. It may be very, you know, we're not expecting that there's going to be very detailed clinical data, but just in terms of the reports that might be generated from case report forms, and also just having that kind of something that's very uh, common, and therefore not comparable completely, but th that it's easier to see trends between countries and then to be able to identify at-risk groups. And, um, and just the other thing is that we will have to cost all this so that we, we can try and, and find people to, to help us uh, implement the, the roadmap, the, our work, the plan. work plan. And then just on the data, still the, I think the, the other thing that really, I think it's the, the basic uh, description of the cases. I think that's something that's really the, the data that is in the line list, we can really use better for the clinical uh, care and for uh, improving the, the care during the outbreaks. And so having this basic analysis by sex and by age groups and by uh, you know the delays to care, it's really something that can be done during the outbreak for the operational purposes. And it's maybe not done by the surveillance people because they don't they only care about numbers, but I think it's very useful for the case management uh, those in charge of the case management, um, Mohammed. Yes, uh, just uh, are we considering uh, what we we talked about uh, after the group discussions? Uh, mainly, uh, what we can do better for increasing the access of treatment. Are we considering all these points? Because some of them I don't see it here. Thank so, you. Yeah, I I was trying to go through the points before orally. Uh, so this is just the work plan we had before. So I just put the same slide, but we have been discussing the things that we can we took from the uh, discussions on the community care and uh, and the rest. I think it's really about the community and decentralized care that I think we have quite a number of uh, concrete uh, uh, way forward points. The so I, I think some of it, for example, part of the treatment, etc. That. It's in that. It's actually all up there. Don't worry. It's not gone. It's like in the next page. Um, the the package that we just presented is part of that. I think some of the things that Isa said in terms of advocacy for a, we had discussed as well in terms of inclusion. I think some of it goes beyond our work plan as a case management working group, and that's great that we've had that. Joelle was present in that session as well. So we will take that away. It won't necessarily show up in the case management working group work plan because some of it is beyond us. But that, sorry, I keep pointing at it. Um, but that we we've we've taken note, and I think those, for example, are two of the very concrete things is the completion of that package and then this advocacy in with the main donors around case management of terms of the decentralized care is just becomes a de facto that it's asked for and not something that you as as Isa said it becomes an opt out not an opt in and that everybody be looking at so there are a couple i don't know if there are one or two other like very concrete things that you were thinking of we do have the list though no maybe just uh i, I do understand that we talked about you know some of the critical you know uh points are you know somehow out of the scope of the case management but also you can consider we talked about some other important you know points that also you can you can reflect on your work plan as working group as a recommendation thank you so I still don't know if we have missed something. What I was saying, what I, what we will do actually, we will revise the you know the, I think the work plan with a bit more details on what we discuss. We will share it with the group. Joao will put the financing on top of what we discussed, mm -hmm. so we can also have some resources to actually move further with the um, with the work plan. So I think that we can we will do in the next. You know, uh, you will get that. And I think then we can still add, of course, if we miss some uh, major things. So I think 
that's okay. Yep. Thank you. All right. Um, a round of applause. For us. Uh, thanks everyone for your patience and your continued contribution. Uh, we will be having the last uh, session, which is the closing, conclusions and closures.